After a wild doubleheader on Monday Night Football where they played both games at the same time and I beat Al Borland, uh, there's a lot of wins and losses to talk about, and we're getting into who you need to drop, who you need to pick up this week, and what players should we be concerned about after Monday night. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, leave a comment, and enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, September 20th, Waiver Day. Whee! Remember when I couldn't introduce the show properly for like a month and a half? I only remember it because it was a month and a half. Actually, I, I feel like that was at least two months. It was a while, and it brought a lot of us joy. Especially at the end when you thought you could. Yeah, that was the good stuff. But you couldn't. <laughs> So jealous of like our kids that you know they get an injury, they get a an illness. It's mm-hmm. like, just wait a couple hours, yeah. and your body's done. It's all fixed, you know. We yeah. we we have a longer uh, timeline. Yeah, I was uh, I was reading about my old uh, right knee kind of <laughs> swelling up over <laughs> here. Uh, we've been playing some pickleball, and uh, sure. I was reading, and so it's like here's some some uh, elevated factors: age, okay, sport, check sports, <laughs> yeah, check. Obesity. I was like, oh, I got the trifecta. <laughs> Dang it. So your knees are in for it? My Is knees that are p- apparently at this age. I reached out to uh, our our PT. Yes. Uh, yeah. The great Matthew Betts. Did he give you three uh, he has variables? Ne- he has literally never been in any single minute of use or help uh, for me, <laughs> ever. Yeah, yeah, I asked him, and he he said pray. That's what, That was his answer. He didn't give you the, uh, the diet and exercise? No, he should have. But uh, no, uh, Google did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the doctors, and the doctors, and the wife. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, no, a knee sleeve should be enough. You'll be fine. Okay, I'll sleeve it up. All right, waivers on today's show. We'll be looking at some important names. There was some sweat last night. When you have two Monday night football games, congratulations if you survived the sweat. Yep. Um, also, uh, apologies to you if you did not. NFL, don't do that again. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> that was very simple. I mean, yeah, it don't, just just don't, just don't do it. Why? Why did this happen? Double like, headers are normal. This has been around for like a hundred years with baseball. This, you just you play one and then you play the other. And the NFL has been doing this for years. No, 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 no. They're like play one and then like start the other during the second quarter. Why did this? Does anyone have any idea why this happened? Kyle, do you have any information for us? Uh, it's just. That's how it is. Yeah, that's just how it is. Yeah, don't do that. Brooks, do you have anything for us? Nah, I think that's just what we got. Well, Al, how about you? It's just how it is, man. Oh, great. Yeah, very helpful. Um, Uh, Roger, don't do that. Well, I feel like you could make more money the uh, back-to-back game. Yes. It makes no sense. I wanted to watch the Bills game, but... I prefer. I picked the uh, the Eagle Viking game. They did in the Bills game early. I saw that. <laughs> they did that to try to help us out. They uh, ended that in the middle of the third. Um, I I'll stick with the almost upset pick. One a week. <laughs> <laughs> I had yeah, somebody tweet me that they put one. their life savings down on the Titans. It's mm. like, eh. I said Titans plus a hundred. By the way, if you go back and listen to the tape, they, not plus ten. They barely covered that. I know. I know. What a whooping. Uh, Gabe Davis didn't need him to uh, destroy the Tennessee Titans. Because all you need is Stephon. All you need is Josh Allen. Yeah. Uh, if if Stephon was gone, whoever else was uh, I, next up. I feel like if you take Stephon Diggs off of that Monday night game, it, it looks way different. I'm sure it does. Yeah, he's he's looking but pretty. But Josh Allen is very good. Pretty good. Uh, Bills, 2-0. and how. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, big announcement. No! <laughs> We have a very special, brand new, completely free to enter giveaway. 
right now at FootClanGiveaway.com. It's a big one. Yes, this is uh, this is a big one. Mm -hmm. We're giving away a signed Jalen Waddle jersey, a signed Jalen Hurts jersey. Oh my god! And a signed DJ Moore jersey. Oh, he has my last name. And then we're also giving away a virtual studio tour. So we we always get requests to see this studio. Uh, we'll hop on with somebody on Zoom. We'll walk them through um, Deucer's Alley. That's where they, they do their work over there, Deucer's Alley. <laughs> Stinks back there. Yeah. And then you know, uh, – Well, it's an alley. <laughs> right. Yeah. You ever been in an alley like, oh, man, <laughs> get a whiff of that. This smells good back here. <laughs> Never had a good smelling alley. That's what they say. <laughs> or Deuce. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So well, yeah, it'd be a, yeah, because there's usually a deuce in the alley. Yeah. We'll take a brief walk through Deucer's <laughs> Alley. You'll see the studio, and uh, we'll hang out with you on Zoom. And that is all free to enter at FootClanGiveaway.com. You can see over there uh, how to get into the Jalen Waddle, Jalen Hurts, DJ Moore virtual studio tour giveaway. So yeah, go over there, FootClanGiveaway.com. The community is at JoinTheFoot.com. We already started talking about the Monday Night Football games, uh, so you know. If you if you had started Devin Singletary, you were going to be disappointed because this game it was over quick. He only had six carries. Just repeat that audio throughout the entire it, season. It really is one of those things where you you usually want your first and second down back, which is basically what Devin Singletary is predominantly to have a big lead and protect the lead. But their leads are so big that it's like, well, now let's rest him. So that that let James Cook get in there in the preseason portion of the game. Hassan Haskins as well. That meant Derrick Henry wasn't on the field. Are well, you worried right now? Because because you had two running backs in this uh, Monday night slate that were top picks. Two first rounders, yep. And so Derrick Henry goes 13 for 25, but he scores to, to basically save you from pure disaster. Mm -hmm. But then in the other game, Dalvin Cook, six for 17 on the ground, Four for 19 through the air, but 10 total touches in a game where, look, you thought, I mean, Philadelphia, didn't they just give up a million yards on the ground at DeAndre Swift and uh, Jamal Williams scored twice? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here you came, you came into this game thinking this is a, a smash situation for Dalvin Cook. But in the back of my mind, look, the situations are different for the Titans and the Vikings. The Titans lost A.J. Brown. And so your your play action game, you're you're having this, you know, Traylon Burks is not ready yet to be that kind of a force. And then the new the new offense in Minnesota. Are we concerned about either of these players long term? Uh you mean for Dalvin Cook and Derrick Henry? Dalvin Cook and Derrick Henry, because if you're not concerned, this is by low of all by lows for these two players. Yeah. But if you are concerned, you know, what does a fantasy player even do? I'm less concerned about Dalvin Cook uh, just because I know he's going to catch a few passes. I mean, like you, Derrick Henry got bailed out by a touchdown. Well, Dalvin Cook caught four pass. We caught four passes. He had a pretty egregious drop as well. But but when you're going to catch four passes, a uh, like I mean that's essentially the, with that receiving work that covers a touchdown. So you put that into the into the the rushing work and Dalvin Cook is at least a little bit safer on a week to week basis. I'm trying to pull up the 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 Titans schedule to see if that is terrifying at all. Let me read off some names for you. Oh well, there's not Las Vegas. I'm okay there. Uh the Colts. Uh they apparently are a dumpster fire, okay? Washington. That's fine. All right. So, Derrick Henry, better days ahead. Derrick Henry should be fine as and then he goes into the bye week and gets the the Colts, the Texans. So, yeah, Derrick Henry is looking okay. I, so, buy low? I, yeah. I think he is a buy low because it's very easy as a manager of Derrick Henry to be petrified. Um, you've got a guy that's a little bit older. There were question marks and concerns w even when you drafted him for a lot of people. I mean, some people took him number three overall. Yep. Um, I've, I did that in a league or two. Uh, and some people got him at the back of the first when it was like, oh, everyone's passing on him. The thing is, is there's a big question here as to – the offense is worse without A.J. Brown, clearly. The offensive line is a little bit worse. Yeah, so they is, lost Taylor Lewan to start the game, too. So is this something that will be prescriptive for the rest of the season? I don't think Derrick Henry has necessarily lost. You go, oh, he, he, you know, he gained no yards, but he does this all the time. Like, if you, if you get Derrick Henry in the backfield, 
Yeah, you just stop exactly. him. I mean, it, a couple the train years can't ago, move. a couple years ago, he was the number two running back of the season. Was unbelievably dominant. Had like six or seven games where he was three and a half yards a carry or lower. Like he, he needs that head of steam. And against the Buffalo Bills, he had no. The coal was empty out of that <laughs> locomotive, and there was no way to get going. So I don't necessarily look at this and get petrified, especially with an easier schedule coming up. Um, but you should be able to buy him very, very low. 13 carries in two and a half quarters. He's going to get the work moving forward. They don't have a choice. I mean, that's the whole offense on the team. The other side with Dalvin Cook is a little more concerning because the offense, the system has changed. Clearly, Kirk Cousins is trying to force the ball to Justin Jefferson a lot. And, you know, 12 targets in this game. It wasn't a great game for Jefferson because those targets were a backpedaling fadeaway jumper against Darius Slay. Yeah, I'm I do wonder if when when they're breaking down the film that they kind of mark it correct not mark it correct, but just as a team go uh hey Kirk, you can't do that or we will lose every single time. And I, he his response is stop putting me on prime time then. <laughs> I just want the fantasy world to understand right now if this was the first game of the year. Oh yeah. There's panic in the streets about Jefferson there's panic in the streets about the entire Kevin O'Connell offense. You know, you, you this was the, you know, you, what did they say on the broadcast? Humility is a week away. In week one, it looked like they were the next Sean McVay superstar offense. And then week two, they're humbled against a great defense. So coming up for the Minnesota Vikings, the Detroit Lions. Oh, juicy. Juicy. That's when I panic about Dalvin. If he does nothing sure. against Detroit next week. Gets the Saints after that. Not so great. But then he gets Chicago. So yeah. they, he should be fine. Do you put Dalvin Cook in the buy low? I do. I, I think both of these are great players who are going to be part of – like Derrick Henry is the centerpiece of the offense, and Dalvin Cook is part of a good offense. So. Will you will you trade me um, Henry in our league of record on the cheap? Uh, Not on the cheap. <laughs> no. No, I won't. I mean, so are you taking one of these – Please? Uh, I'm trying to find a good name to say. Like they've maybe overperformed a little bit. Uh, Like – DeAndre Swift. I would, I would, oh, DeAndre I would much Swift. rather have DeAndre Swift. Than, Swift. Hen than Henry or Cook? Than either of them, yes. He, he looks outstanding. Yeah. And, and and he was limited last week with an ankle injury that will get better as time goes on. And, you know, he was able to do it on, like, did he even have Is 10 that, touches last week? Yeah, that will be – it will get healed before his next injury. I, yes, exactly. <laughs> that, that is possible. Okay, give me another uh, overperformer at the running back position. Kyle, the, do you have any suggestions for us? In that tier of people, like there's there's a couple of guys that I'm really interested in. Eckler, I think he's just underperformed, and I want to get him on my teams right now. Oh, yeah, so you're trying to get him. Okay, but I'm so trade away like someone you could maybe, 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 maybe like AJ Dillon. You think you could trade AJ Dillon plus a piece to go get? Probably I, not. Uh, Cook. I think you might be able to. The one name that you got late that I mean, this would take some overreactions from people, but. There are people in almost every single league that all they look at is the results. They just go, well, this guy scored a lot of fantasy points. This guy hasn't make that move. But James Robinson, yeah, he's back. He's been great for a couple of years. Like, there's no question that I would, you know, if I could go from James Robinson and go and snag a, a Derrick Henry or a Dalvin Cook. You or know, an James, Austin Eckler. Absolutely. Yeah, combo Robinson with somebody. Mm -hmm. That yeah. does feel possible. Could happen in some leagues, or even you know Clyde. And and by the way, look yeah, look maybe. for the, you know, if you have that magical trade combination, those players underperforming on an zero and two team in your league, that's the magical combination. Sure. If if a team if they're underperforming and the team's two and zero, they don't care. If they've lost, they want to mix it up. They want to change things. So pay attention there. You know, other takeaways from this game. I Jalen thought, hurts. Oh man. <laughs> Jalen Hurts looked great. Twenty six for thirty one, three thirty three, one passing touchdown. Uh two you rushing. You don't need him. Two rushing. Yeah. Uh Dallas Goddard looked great. I I'm gonna throw Irv Smith out there. Yes, absolutely. Um, Eight you know, targets. They they used and, and again, I don't know how much of that was just like being, you know, when you get six carries to Dalvin Cook, you're in comeback mode the whole game. He dropped a a touchdown that would have given him two in a huge game. He would have been the probably number one tight end on the week because it was about a 60 yard touchdown, but he looked pretty good. I mean, he's athletic. He looks like Cordell Patterson out there wearing that number. 
Um, there's not many tight ends that can take a catch a 60 yard bomb. Like there's very, very few of them. And he, after week one with the, the low percentage of snaps, it seems like they're ready to get Irv back in to be an integral piece. Yeah. They said that was their plan week yeah. one. They were bringing him yeah, back. He I wasn't mean, after the shit. fact. Well, sure. After the Your fact, turds. we told people not to play Irv Smith week one because we, he, he no, was injured. The I, whole, I, thought oh, he was, I thought he was an interesting streaming option. It was his start of the week. Yeah. Oh wow! So not telling yeah, people yeah. to start him and making yeah, him I your see. start of the week is a different. Those are those, those are, are very different. very opposite uh, approaches. <laughs> but I think he's look. This is the waiver wire show. He's the absolute tight end pickup of the week. Yeah, he's going to be out there on waivers. He is involved in a good offense that could have targets out there. And you know, in the in the draft, yeah, this season, is what I thought week one was going yeah, to be. In the draft season, I I loved Irv Smith, but when he got injured and we, you know, he hadn't played a single preseason game, it was just the worry of are you going to be able to get that utilization week one? Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are signing veteran wide receiver Cole Beasley. That's not good. I mean, obviously, you know you're without Mike Evans, but you're hoping to have Godwin or Julio back. But you're probably hoping or you're less optimistic now that they had to make an addition. Exactly. If they thought also, I'm getting Godwin and Julio back, they don't go out and grab Cole Beasley because of a Mike Evans suspension. Maybe. They might. I mean, you need, you need to have some depth because even if you're like, we're going to get Julio back, you have to be ready that – if Julio leaves this game, we need a body to go in there. It actually it just muddies the water on who you could like break glass and start next week like between a, a Brashad Perryman Gage. or a Scotty Miller or a Russell Gage. Now Cole Beasley's in the mix. It just makes it pretty messy. Would yeah, you agree? I, I, I think he's just depth and probably won't see the field very much. But I bet if we all say a name to start next week, we don't all say the na same name. <laughs> no, that's probably true. I mean, if I had to take a dart I would go Scotty throw, Miller over Bashad Perryman. I would go, you Perryman. Would go Perryman. Would I, you go Gage? I would go Russell Gage. Yeah, so we have so. three names. That and, is a problem. And honestly, if either Julio or Godwin suits I'll go up, Chris Godwin. I would go with that player <laughs> over the yeah, other three. I would too. All right. Because it's a, uh, it's a Tuesday, we have another announcement from the 49ers. Ty Davis Price. High ankle sprain. He's going to miss a few weeks. They're already without Elijah Mitchell with the sprained MCL. So the running back depth chart now looks like... My name is... My name is... Jeff. Jeff Wilson and undrafted free agent Jordan Mason, who will have an opportunity to fill that Ty Davis price role. And it's not impossible that he pops off because that is what happened with Elijah Mitchell Jeff Wilson is lined up to to get the majority of the work right now, so uh, just start him with confidence for yeah. the time being. Marlon Mack was on the practice squad. I mean, he'll more than likely be called up. Mack, mack, mack. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Jeff, like, Jeff Wilson's range of outcomes to me are now super safe to juicy to elite because like, he Jordan, looked pretty good last week. He, yeah, he looked like he was healthy and ready to go. And Jordan Mason, undrafted, yeah, Kyle Shanahan finds diamonds in the rough all the time, but if Mason can't do anything, then Jeff Wilson's going to see so many opportunities per game until Elijah Mitchell is back. You will need to add Mason. Because oh, yeah, Jeff yeah. Wilson yeah, yeah, has been course. perennially hurt like every other running back in that uh, organization. I don't know what do stretches they, they should... do. What what are they doing? No, it's the, the, so they... A lot of people aren't aware the the their practice field and their and their main um, uh, stadium they have divots. All they put divots throughout the entire oh. field, like oh, little potholes to to toughen up. To exactly right, just like we're weeding out the if, weak ones. If you can <laughs> if you can overcome all these injuries from running on uh, the the divot field. I just figured they used them like a as a top golf, and all the people with their wedges are just taking the chunks out of the field. I mean, why do the 49ers get so injured? I don't know. It's unbelievable. It's like I feel like this is do you remember seven we, years in a row. Yeah. I feel like Shanahan knows about this because do you remember years ago when they when they added McKinnon, Tevin Coleman, and like two other running backs to the backfield, and we were all making fun of them for having that much depth. Mm -hmm. And then they all got injured. He knew the divot field was on the way. <laughs> all right. He knows how he mistreats everybody. Yeah, Dalton Schultz. Uh, yeah. Okay. PCL injury confirmed for Dalton Schultz. And so, you know, in the short term, 
Matthew Betts talking about this injury, generally a bit slow to heal. Would be surprised if he's out there Monday night against the Giants. And even if he is, we don't know if it's grade one, grade two. We don't know how his performance will be affected. And here's yet another tight end you can't count on. If if I had Dalton Schultz and Irv Smith is on the waivers, I am picking up Irv Smith and I am playing Irv Smith this week, even even if they say Dalton Schultz will be active, obviously better draft capital, had a good week one, but I, I would certainly tr do anything in my power to not start Dalton Schultz yep. until we know he's healthy. Michael Pittman making good progress in his recovery. We, we made good progress. He may play in week three against the Chiefs. I would, oh, you will, Michael. I would go so far as you to will say play. the Colts really need him. I was going to say do the Colts score a, a point without him against the Chiefs in week three. You would play, Michael. And you, you don't even great. have to guard the other wide receivers. Mm -hmm. yes. If you're the Chiefs, you play 11 on JT. <laughs> and then if just Pittman's let him out. Yeah, and just let the other guys run around. And then <laughs> if Pittman plays, you just do like a six and five? I, yeah, yeah, you don't have to guard <laughs> anybody else. Goodness gracious. Maybe Gigantor. But nobody can really guard him. Yeah. So. All right, that was today's news and notes. The problem is Matt Ryan can't get the ball high enough anymore. Oh, to get up to where he Gigantor can't get to that can, altitude. Yeah, where Gigantor would actually high point the ball takes incredible arm strength. Yeah, that's you a lot of altitude arm strength. You usually have to punt the ball <laughs> to, to get it up to Gigantor's uh, top point. <laughs> His top point? Yeah. His high point. Got it. <laughs> that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break. Back with the waivers. I just think the Colts fans must be. Oh, that's brutal. They've got to be devastated because they were a team that I think had. If you're a fan of the Colts, you had Super Bowl aspirations. Yes, you I did. believe you said, quote, if, if they, they were, were the, in the NFC, they would go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and I I still could see that happening. Um, <laughs> I mean, the NFC is not looking any stronger than before the season. The Packers look beatable. The The Buccaneers are all destroyed. The, the Saints, the Dark Horse Saints are. You know, certainly did broken back at the quarterback. Yeah. The Eagles look pretty good. Oh, baby. Yes. You know it's going to happen because I've been on the Eagles train a couple of times. And you're not. You, you finally departed. And I finally left. So, all right, let's talk waivers. Welcome to The Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. Let's look at the wide receiver position here. It's a there, good week for wide receivers. Yeah, there's some, there's some names out there in the likely rostered, but you better check category. Just have a little peek. Curtis Samuel, Traylon Burks. Uh, Traylon Burks was not prolific yesterday, but he was their leading receiver. So we'll leave it at that. Well, he was three for... 55! Had to get that in there. I don't nice. think that's true. That's not true? I don't think that's true at all. Well... It is now. Uh, no, we changed the stat line. Can, yeah, I'm gonna. I think that's incorrect. I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna go with uh, four for forty-seven. Four for forty. Where? where? Forty-seven. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Uh, in my we just round up. Yeah, we just round up. Yeah, in your defense, the one of the deucers put the wrong stat line in the doc. That is true. Yeah. Um, Curtis Samuel, nine targets, seven for seventy-eight, and a touchdown. He's the clear number one pickup for me if he's available. He's only available in about a quarter of leagues, but um, great involvement two weeks in a row. It does remind you of the DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, Curtis Samuel situation where you never trusted Curtis Samuel because the other guys would be started before him. I still think you're going to have those weeks that, you know, they don't, they're not in that situation to throw the ball as much as Carson Wentz is throwing it, but. Right now, he is. These two guys need to get picked up. Samuel's number one, like you said, but into the into the lower rostered priority pickups of the week, at the top of the list has to be Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson yes. had fourteen targets. Yes, they're throwing. They've already confirmed Joe Flacco is starting another game. So even if you're nervous about the return, what which everyone we, is, we we should talk including, about including the Jets. The Jets have said. And I quote, this is so good. they're not bringing back Zach Wilson until he's 110%. So does this mean he's never coming back due to math? You can't go over 100%. Yeah. He's going to come back and be like, dude, I'm 100%. I'm 100%. I'm fully healed. Hey, 
We want you to be 110, okay? How? We're gonna, How do I do that? We're going to stick with Flacco a little while longer. Yeah, go talk to the trainer. We're Dude. working on it. The wide receivers really like him. Um, I mean, that backs up what we thought could happen, which was, you know, Garrett Wilson came out and said he throws a catchable ball 14 times his direction. He's like Snap wise, he's still, you know, behind Elijah Moore and Garrett Wilson. Target wise, yes, he is. Right How is Garrett Wilson behind Garrett Wilson? Oh, I'm. Did I? I in my head, I was saying Corey Davis. Ah, uh, in your mouth, it was saying. <laughs> I I I can see that now. Corey Davis is the <laughs> one I'm saying he's. So he's technically still third, but it doesn't matter. But fourteen targets. Co no, he's the one. Corey Davis is the player that Garrett Wilson needs to overcome because where Garrett Wilson made most of his progress was on the outside, but where he's playing most of his snaps right now is kind of going back and forth in the slot with Braxton Berrios. The point I of what I'm saying Berrios. here, yeah, sure, yeah, but he's still splitting time, even though he's passed him to be number one. The point of what I'm saying is that there is still opportunity for growth. I'm not saying he's going to have more than 14 targets in the future. I'm saying that right now he does not have the snaps that he is going to have at the end of the season. At the end of the season, he'll be on the field far more than he is right now. And when he overcomes and starts playing in two wide receiver sets, uh, if, if that happens this season, I think there could be big things ahead. I do. If you don't get him now, you're never touching him. Absolutely. You, you've got to get him now. How much fab? Uh, I would spend a ton on Garrett. Wilson. I would not. Wide receivers, I still, I still won't go that crazy. And I do think that you're, you're going to come back down to earth before it gets better um so i would go like 15 percent. oh i'd go a lot more than that 40 percent at least mm. probably 50 i think i'm in the middle of you guys they, like it, i i totally understand andy's excitement he's where on he, 187 target well, pace through two weeks yeah i get that <laughs> i mean dude, rookie, he was first game eight targets was he the number 10 pick am i remembering that right yeah with the, with the jets yeah 10 yeah. okay so i mean a top 10 pick at the wide receiver position brought it like and week two you're like Oh, yeah, he's that guy, or at least has the potential to be that guy. I can understand the excitement. How much I, for Jalen Waddle last would, year in week two? Yeah, that's... It's, uh, just, what, it's a perfectly fair comparison. Like, So for Wilson, I would go... I'd go into the 30s. I don't think I would go half. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a special talent, but all the jokes aside of the 110% for Zach Wilson, he will come back, and he will be the quarterback. What I like is the team's committed to, to being a bad defense. That's, one of, my are, favorite, yeah, that's yeah. one of my favorite commitments by this team. They look they're, in the mirror. They're going to throw the football a ton. They're going to have to. Uh, Jahan Dotson scored again, 4 for 59. I think he looks outstanding. When I watch him on he, the field. And he ran the most routes, he is, actually. He's a really, really, really good player. I'm all in on grabbing these rookies and putting them on your roster. They're really, I mean. You know, Wilson, Dotson, uh, Olave. Olave. Yeah, yeah, Burks. Burks, the, put them on your roster. They're going to do big, big, big things. And no. if you're in a keeper league, my goodness, all the more reason. You could be at the end of the year, and one of these guys could be the Jefferson Chase type of keeper, and then you're doubling that value. Yeah, no, I, th th those guys London, are the – Drake London. You, the I mean, you, clear you have to pay so much to trade for London. That being said, they're still rostered in most leagues, so a little bit more than half. So – there's still some really good wide receivers you could pick up that are available in more than half of leagues. My number one at that point would be Jacoby Myers, who I, I believe Devontae Parker, their big offseason acquisition, has a catch this season. Well, I mean, they, Cole Komet, be jealous. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> How'd you do that, Parker? Jacoby Myers is what he has always been, which is a really good wide receiver for PPR leagues. Yes. So if 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 I'm in a standard, no way. I, he, he, touchdowns are too important. He, he hates those. Um, but in a PPR league, Jacoby Myers, he's someone that not only should be rostered but should be started. Thirteen targets, nine for ninety-five. Problems at the running back position, health-wise for them. Michael Gallup, I think you need to put him on your roster. This is the time. Yes, now is the time. If you are looking for a start this week, and Michael Gallup isn't back out there. Noah Brown is a spot start candidate. Five for 91 and one. This is a Monday night matchup against the Giants. So if you don't have definitive knowledge of whether Gallup's going to be out there, you know, you're moving on to somebody else probably, which is, you know, slimmer pickings. You've got Greg Dorch out there again. Dorch! Four for 55 and a touchdown. Uh, he is 
going to have to be involved for Arizona until they get healthier at the wide receiver position. And and honestly, the best waiver wire pickup uh, of of all wide receivers this week could end up being Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard yeah, uh, has been kind of overlooked because he had the Achilles injury. I mean, he was completely off my boards. I don't have one single share of Sterling Shepard in my 150 best Paul leagues or any roster that I'm on. But he has been out there, 72% of snaps, 88% of snaps. He has a history, uh, you know, here where he he's good with Daniel Jones. This coaching staff is not saying, oh, we pay Kenny Galladay the most. We drafted uh, Kadarius Tony with a one. These guys have to get on the field. They're saying, we're going to put out the guys that, that we feel give us the best chance to barely win the game. And um, <laughs> that's... Win's a win. That's Sterling Shepard. He, you know, week one, he was a top 20 wide receiver. Week two, he had 10 targets. Uh, it, it didn't turn into much, 34 yards, but like when you look at the snaps and the targets and the history, and he looks healthy. So to me, I think Sterling Shepard is, is a good pickup. He, I do. I agree that he's a good pickup for a long term. This week against Dallas, it, it could be rough. Dallas I is agree. a good defense. I agree. Uh, let's talk about players you would drop or be willing to drop. Okay. First of all, big, big news. And I did it with malice and joy. Oh, oh, I did. Yes, I did yes, see. I yep. But I dropped Marquez Valdez Scaling. <laughs> Get off my team. I never believed in you. Why did I draft you in one of my leagues? It happens to us all. It brings me morbid joy. There is to I, say goodbye. I can't wait. Oh yeah. I cannot wait for eighty and two. This week. Oh, man. Oh, I will, I can't I will be hitting that button next week. <laughs> I can't wait for 80 and 2, and everyone grabs him, and then he never does it again. That, well, oh, he'll whatever. do it again. But anyways, <laughs> you'd, drop, you'd drop MBS, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. You Would you drop uh, Adam Thielen after two weeks? The, I, I wouldn't drop him, but I would certainly be shopping him. Adam Thielen has a big enough name and kind of rescued his day at the end of the game where if people weren't watching, they go, oh, you, you know, he was five yeah. receptions. and But he was completely – I think we were into the fourth quarter before yes. he might have caught a ball. The utilization of Adam Thielen is mind-blowing. And, I mean, week one it made sense because Justin Jefferson was just wide open on every single route that he ran. Uh, but this week – when you're struggling to get the ball out, and Adam Thielen is a possession closer to the line of scrimmage guy in this offense with Jefferson there, the fact that they weren't even looking at him, I mean, there is uh, th these are the concerns that Jason had coming into the season. There is a a, a decent possibility that Thielen is just cooked. Uh, yeah, yeah, and they they did take a shot in the end zone at, at, towards the end of the game to him. That's where he. You got to remember that's what we needed. That's where he was prolific there was nothing in the yardage last year that made him valuable it was are they going to go to him around the red zone again I mean through two games we have no Dalvin Cook touchdowns no Adam Thielen touchdowns in this offense and we're all going uh what do we do yep. yeah if Johnny got, Munt getting targets around the end zone if you've got Adam <laughs> Thielen and James Robinson package them together go I'm get definitely a worried. running back upgrade yeah I'm definitely worried uh Darnell Mooney yep I would be willing to move on. Yeah, these wide receivers we talked about today, if they're on your waivers, I'd rather have them. Elijah Moore? No. No, no I would not drop Elijah Do not. Moore. He is still the clear he's, snap lead. He's, I would drop him for Garrett Wilson in a heartbeat. I uh, if that Because that's the decision on the table here. I know what sure. you're saying. I get the sentiment of what you're saying. Sure. Like, I wouldn't drop him for no reason. I don't think he is independently MVS level drops. But if you're talking about you have Elijah Moore and Garrett Wilson's on the waiver wire, I'm going to go for the more explosive – Higher draft capital, higher targeted player. Man, I I don't think I would. I totally see what you're saying, but I mean, if you look at who's who's out there more, who's running more routes, who's, um, you know, obviously a little bit more experience. I just because we're two weeks in and and Garrett Wilson is you know out targeting him, I I don't necessarily think that that's how the rest of the season I, goes. Gonna go, it's gonna get better for Garrett Wilson, not worse. I think it will balance out for Elijah Moore and Wilson. So are you dropping Elijah Moore for Garrett Wilson? Mm, no, uh, man, that's a really, really difficult decision. I don't, I don't think I would, dude. Like, if you're in Fab and you have Elijah Moore, I'm not, I'm not cutting Elijah Moore, who's a, I think is still a very, very good option for fantasy football, and dumping a huge amount of Fab to get someone who I think by the by the halfway point will be clear or not clearly, but uh, uh far more balanced and and even. Okay, I'll stand along with Garrett. Uh, Julio Jones. I would 
not drop him. I mean, uh, you got to wait and see his health yeah. because he's. It's ironic. I think he's a good start this week if he plays. I mean, he's dangerous due to the injury, but if he is active while Mike Evans is not, he should, has two of those three traits you talked about at the beginning, Jason. Yeah, I, he's age just, and, and sports. sports. Yeah, I, I've I've looked though. I've the, the physique of Julio Jones not obese. No, he's he seems to be in uh, uh, top of physical shape. Not not top. Oh yeah, that guy is. If I, if we were next to Julio Jones, you would go check that, his knee. Well, that I can't. I don't have Superman X ray vision. I'm just saying physically. If you stood next to Julio, you'd go. That man was made out of I'm, stone. I'm definitely willing to drop Julio Jones for. Uh, I'm willing to, for, for Wilson, like Wilson, Samuel, Burks, Dobson. Dotson, Myers. Um, I wouldn't do it for me. Yeah. I wouldn't personally do it for Myers, but those other guys. I would yes. do it for Myers if I'm in a full PPR. And I would rather have Sterling Shepard than, than Julio. Uh, Julio. Yeah, Julio's just going to get hurt again. He might. And then by the time Probably. when this team runs the offense the way they want to run it, they didn't have Russell Gage in week one, right? They had. He was on the field, but he wasn't he fully was, active. It, like, it, it wasn't full go running uh, a bunch of snaps he was a disappearing act so evans godwin gage i i just don't know if julio is going to be what we hope and dream ever again running backs let's talk about them it's not, not as good a week it's rough man i checked all my leagues this morning at running back and there is jack squat available it's it's really a a looking forward type of a week yeah i mean it, the only player that i would say that you could get spot starts out of this upcoming week if they're on your waiver wire there's two names it's raheem mostert yep and who had 11 carries and 55 percent of snaps are we, then, wait are we sure mm. are we just are we have we been doctoring numbers this entire run of the show just to get more 55 yeah probably i mean i don't know i don't trust those guys there'd be a lot more. they live in an alley guys <laughs> J.D. McKissick, 36. Oh, yeah, he, was he did it early. J.D. McKissick had uh, seven targets, seven for 54. Thank goodness it wasn't 55. Yeah. And um, so those two players are spot starts. Outside of that, it's what Mike said. It's looking forward. Yep, and looking forward, uh, well, I guess. Jordan Mason. Well, uh, uh, well Daryl Williams of the Arizona Cardinals. James Conner, they've said that the injury is – not serious, and it seems like he'll be back, but he is James Conner, and we've played this game with him for years that when he gets when he's when he starts to get banged up, it just keeps happening over and over so I think that and that the way that they used the running backs of Eno and Daryl Williams preseason it sh it certainly felt like Eno Benjamin would be the guy, but I mean he had one more opportunity than Daryl, but Daryl just like that's when, why it's tough when it comes to the, did we get a goal line with uh, once Connor Darryl was Daryl scored, out? yeah. Yeah, so I, I think the goal line work would go to Daryl Williams, which makes him far more valuable for the Cardinals. So I, mean, I, don't, I, I think Connor plays this week, but Daryl Williams, if you just have an empty spot on your bench, is worth just putting on there for cheap. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really sparse this week. Uh, you brought up the name Jordan Mason, but he certainly needs to be picked up. Um, Jeff Wilson is not my name is Jim. usually able to stay on the field. And even in, even if he is, Jordan Mason's going to get the carries that Ty Davis Price got this last week. If he's explosive with them and looks great, Shanahan can make a switch. Yeah, he, he absolutely could. Tyler Algier got 31% of snaps for Atlanta. Um, I didn't think he looked particularly good in that game. No, he's... he's um, By the way, 14 opportunities for Ty Davis Price. That's what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, I mean uh, Dar uh Tyler Algier is the b the backup to Damian Williams. Damian Williams was injured, so who's on IR now? Yeah. Oh, he did get yeah, put yeah, on yeah, IR. He's going to miss, miss multiple that. weeks. Okay, well then Al Algier should be picked up. He's going to he's going to be in that spot, but I mean, it's tough. You just don't want to start anyone really that doesn't, you know, he doesn't project as a pass catching back for a team that's going to be down. If I was panic starting, I'd start Jordan Mason over Tyler Algier. Agreed. Yeah, I think yeah, I agree. And then Brian Robinson. Fun. Brian Robinson is yep. working his way back. It's it's hard for me to see that happening quickly where he goes from inactive, dealing with the recovery, to I'm playing him in fantasy. But you never know based on the – I mean, he's already listen to Ron practice. Rivera. Ron Rivera 
gushes over this guy, and he does the opposite with Gibson for whatever reason. One um, of the one of the so, problems though is that Gibson's looked really good this season. He's been very good for the Manders, and you, when it was all training camp and preseason, and you had, uh, you know, you had Gibson returning kickoffs and looking like the clear backup to Brian Robinson. If you start that way and Brian Robinson plays well, then maybe he just gets more and more work and you start to see the the window closing on Antonio Gibson. But now it's hard for me to imagine Antonio Gibson, who's looked really good, just completely being uh, relegated to uh, a, 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 th a clear-cut third string. I think, Rob I think once Robinson is fully healthy, I think they'll make the switch really quick. Yeah, I, do, I think it's probably going to happen. Gibson was really bad on the ground this last game. Like 14 He's, for 28. He saved it his week with a touchdown. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, uh, with so him, you, you of all people, yes, Mike, it, saying that they're going to make the switch quickly. I it just and We don't know when that will be. Again, Robinson participating in practice, not exactly sure how involved in practice he was, but once once he's good to go, it will, I think, take one one to two weeks and Robinson will be the guy. And that, So that means if you're in a deeper league, right now is when you need to stash him. I am not dropping either of the top two drop candidate names that came through on Twitter and Instagram. Kenneth Walker and Chase Edmonds, no. I'd rather have on my roster than any of those players. 100%. Yeah. I yeah. mean, those those guys are, um, you know, Chase Edmonds, you've got two weeks. One week he was the starter, one week he was the backup. Need more information. And, and Ken Walker is... That was his first game ever. Yeah, I mean, he's he's an explosive athlete behind... I would, one add, of the I would most, be adding him. Absolutely. One of the most um, injury-prone players out there. Now, you can't start Rashad Penny, and you can't start Ken Walker, but they need to be rostered. Sure. And I would be dropping Kenny Gainwell, who is another name that is being mentioned. But Miles, Miles Sanders, Sanders looks, looks great. good. Yeah. It's funny how giving him the ball does that. You know, he's never looked good on any of his non-carries. That's true. He's always looked terrible. He's actually always looked good as a running back he yes. just doesn't get the work in the goal line because Jalen Hurts with two more rushing touchdowns yeah, yeah the, the touchdowns are going to be hard to come by for Sanders all right at the tight end position you might be desperate Cole Komet David Njoku Dalton Schultz uh the jo George Kittle drafter um it's there's desperation once again and you're trying to find a diamond in the rough you guys mentioned Irv Smith his athleticism is the reason to go with him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he scored on a play immediately following like a 20-yard catch by Johnny Munt, their other tight end. Uh, he almost had a long 60-yard touchdown down the sideline. Detroit next week, you could do worse than, than the athleticism of Irv Smith. Hayden Hurst, seven more targets for Hayden Hurst. Uh, here's what Hayden Hurst is. It, he is the uh, – Joe Burrow doesn't want to get sacked on this play, emergency valve. Mm -hmm. And, unfortunately, he's getting sacked so much. He should throw to Hayden Hurst more. So, I mean, look, give me seven targets. Yep. Eight targets week one, seven targets week two, and this was, was with T. Higgins playing the game. <clears throat> you also have – Evan Ingram, eight targets. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I it's, it's yes. st staying with Hayden yes. Hurst for a second. You have touchdown upside with Hayden Hurst. You you have a few handful of games last year where CJ Uzama had you know massive outpouring of of points due to touchdowns because Joe Burrow if he's on he's on fire so um, I I don't mind picking up Hayden Hurst but yeah Evan Ingram uh, I mean you want to talk about another quarterback that looks like he could, I mean is it is it happening is uh, I'm not gonna say that yet is Trevor Lawrence like would you pick Trevor Lawrence up and stash him or no. just no in single QB yeah probably not but Evan Ingram has seen 12 targets and he's caught 11 of them that's amazing. I mean Evan Ingram ladies and gentlemen <laughs> wow with a 92 percent catch rate if, if unbelievable you, the bar for Evan Ingram is one inch off the ground yeah and he is stepping over it <laughs> <laughs> in the world of the tight end position where there's so many players are he's athletic boom bust and they're like it's either oh my guy got a touchdown or he didn't the fact that Evan Ingram at least gives you a few points with with touchdown upside I agree it he 
should be picked up and played. Tyler Conklin, most routes run at the tight end position through two weeks on a team that's thrown the ball 102 times. <laughs> I was going to say that should not be surprising considering how many times Joe Flacco has thrown the ball. Um, I'm I'm s still really not in on Tyler Conklin. I, I, I play him over Komet. Yes. Uh, Komet <laughs> is off the roster now. Uh, you're holding on to Njoku and Schultz. Um, but you're probably looking like if I have Njoku and Schultz, I am picking up Irv Smith and Evan Ingram and probably rostering both while I try to figure the position out. So we, we already have a note that CJ Uzama, the Jets' other tight end, he is, it, they've already said he's iffy for week three with his hamstring. So yeah, you're you're in the bottom of the the barrel. You're trying to find yourself some points. You're not going to win the week with Tyler Conklin. You're not going to win the week with uh, Hayden Hurst. But you're trying not to goose. Exactly. We're anti goose at the tight end position. Mm -hmm. It's one of our mm -hmm. big principles here. Defensive pickups. Who are your favorites? I like the Chargers a lot. I I know they're available in about half the leagues because of last week's matchup. When you play the Chiefs, you get dropped a lot of times. And so you need to check your waiver wire. They play Jacksonville, Houston, and Cleveland. Yeah. So I think they're a really good defense that has three good matchups. I would say the the Chiefs are interesting in this week so juicy. in particular because they get to take the uh, take on the Colts. It's the Bucks next week, so that's probably just a one-week rental. The Dallas Cowboys, though, available in more than half of leagues. you got the Giants and then Washington. And even, I know Carson Wentz is putting up huge points. He's also making a ton of mistakes, which is good for your DST. The Eagles have Washington, Jacksonville, and Arizona over the next three weeks and look very good as well. Lots yep. of pressure on the quarterback. Lots of playmakers in the secondary. And, the yeah, I mean, uh, the, the Cowboys – uh, That's what I just did. Yeah, uh, that was a good one, Mike. I think, I think that was a really, really nice Would you uh, also call. recommend the Cowboys? Uh, yeah, no, totally. Cleveland on Thursday night against Mitch Trubisky. Okay, yeah, that's not too bad. That's not too shabby. And then I think the panic play of the week would be, uh, I think, the Giants taking yeah. on Cooper Rush. All right, that was Welcome to the Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy with multitasking on Galaxy Z Fold 4. You can view available players on the waiver wire Check player rankings and watch highlights all at once. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Full stream ahead. Streaming quarterback options. Who is your favorite this week? Um, my favorite is Mike. So, Mike, why don't you go? All right. My favorite is Mike's. Mike, why don't you go? Oh, excellent. When you get into the dock first, you get to... Pick from everybody. I'm going with Jared Goff against the Minnesota Vikings. 250-plus and four touchdowns last week. And I, I had this in here before the Monday night meltdown where Jalen Hurts looked like a football god out there just doing whatever he wanted to do. Uh, I think that Minnesota will have a better showing against the Detroit Lions, but Jared Goff has, he has playmakers around him, and either the Lions do well, and Jared Goff puts up some points, or it's competitive, and Jared Goff puts up some points. Yeah, I, Jared Goff looks like a really good play, and, and your weapons comment is not to be undervalued. I mean, they're, he might have some of the best in the entire league. Amon Ra is He's top amazing. Tier. He's jumping in. Hawkinson is absolutely fine for a dump-off valve. DeAndre Swift in the passing game. You got DJ Chark on the outside. I mean, yep. it, it's really, really good. Um, I'm going to go with Marcus Mariota against Seattle. When you have a mobile quarterback that can put up 70 yards and a rushing touchdown on the ground, going up against uh, PFF's 29th ranked coverage unit, Seattle's allowing 11.7 .7 yards per completion, which is also 29th. If you're looking on the waiver wire, it wasn't a great week for waiver wire pickups. So I think Marcus Mariota, if you lost Trey Lance and the waiver is bare, he's probably a little bit lower down and you can find him. And, and as a note, Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah, yeah, you got to pick him is, up. A, you know, if you're in a two quarterback league, you must. You know, every quarterback is rostered in those, and, and I bet he Jimmy is G's available. rostered in a lot of them already. Sure, he might. We he might be. Tua oh, has a rough matchup against Buffalo. Are you doing this? But well, first of all, Mike, you're my favorite start of the week. Yeah, okay. Or, or Thank you. stream of the week. Yes, yeah, you heard. But, cut that audio. But Tua me, just had six touchdowns and 400 plus yards. It doesn't take – it takes but a handful of plays with this offense and the weapons. So it's one Tyreek play. It's one Waddle play. Sure. 
And it's a game where, you know, you're going to be throwing the football for a lot of it. Buffalo has been really unstoppable on offense. Uh, what's the over-under of that game? Do you have it, Kyle? I'll take the over. Uh, I'm curious. I'm you you look it, right it up. But Tua, it, it, it's, it is chasing what he just did, but it's a worthy chase with the weapons he has. When the Titans get down 41-7 to and they don't have A.J. Brown and their main guy is not a pass-catching running back, they're, they just can't do anything right if the Dolphins were to get down against the Bills they just like they got down against the Ravens they're going to air it out to incredibly great weapons I, I don't mind uh taking the chance on Tua the that game in Miami it's 51 and a half right now 51 and a half is the over under and it's in Miami yeah it's in Miami so that that helps as well Buffalo finally having to travel um I think Tua is going to be just fine if you're pivoting from these other options and he's available. Now, I think it would be competitive to pick Tua up on yeah, the waiver wire. I had people asking, like they had Brady and Derek Carr, how much do I spend to get Tua? And, that you know, it's like I wouldn't spend much. I'm not dumping fab on Tua. I think Tua has bright days ahead, but... Um, yeah, the the truth of Tua is not... Six touchdowns and no. 450 yards. Because <laughs> that's no. nobody's truth. But he, he's going to have some big games because of the weapons down the line. It might just be harder to predict them. I'm not sure anybody thought that would be a big game when they were down whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it just became a magical second half. That was on the road too, right? No. That game was in Baltimore? What? Oh, man, I can't remember. What happened to it this It was in week? Miami. Oh, yeah, okay. there we go. Right. There we go. All right. Um, man, that would have been... Well, I don't have to look this up, but his home splits are great. <laughs> so Yes. All right, that is going to do it for today's show. Thank you for tuning in. FootClanGiveaway.com. Win some autographed sports memorabilia and a studio tour. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.